This lesson discusses reading data from a table. Topics include how can you read data from a table using PHP? What is a prepared statement and why would you want to use it? What is an SQL injection attack? And what steps are involved in using prepared statements? Looking at the first code example, we will first introduce the use of the query command on lines 5, 7, and 9 we set up the initial connection information, which is used to identify the driver, in this case MySQL, the host, which is localhost, the database name, which is class, the database username, and the database password. On line 12, we create a database handle. The database handle is an instance of the PDO class. In order to establish the connection, we instantiate a PDO object, and give it the connection information, the username, and the password. On line 15, we create our SQL statement. The SQL statement follows the standard SQL syntax as discussed in another chapter. On line 21, we introduce the query command. The query command is executed off of the database handle, which is the PDO object. The parameters include the SQL statement and the mode in which you wish to return results. In this example, we're using a predefined constant from the PDO class, which will give us an associative array. We then represent this as the variable dollar $row. Each time through the loop, the database will return results. It will be an array of arrays. Dollar $row represents an array, which represents one single row in the database. It's an associative array where the key represents the column name, and the value is the value as represented in the database. On line 24, we then echo this information inside a table data cell using the implode command to expand the array which represents the row in the database. On line 29, we assign a value of null to the database handle which effectively closes the connection. Moving now to the browser, let's have a look at the results. So as you can see, we have a list of users sorted by state and city, which was generated by the SQL statement. So as you can see, the state province column is the primary sort. The city column is the secondary sort. Moving now to our second code example, we introduce a very similar process. However, in this case, we're going to make use of something which is called the prepared statement. We are also going to utilize exception processing by supplying to the PDO object not only the connection string, the username, and the password as before, but in this case we're supplying an extra parameter, which is the error mode attribute, and we are setting that to error mode exception. The different error modes are documented in the PDO documentation page on errors and error handling. As you can see, there are three modes silent, which is the default, warning, and exception. If you leave your PDO connection at the default, if there are errors between the PHP program and the MySQL database server, you will not be informed of these errors. The reason for this is for security purposes. It's possible that attackers could attempt to probe your website for weaknesses. If the error mode is not set to silent, it could reveal errors which would give the attackers additional information in which to formulate what is known as an SQL injection attack. By setting the error mode to warning and exception, it gives us useful information for development purposes. However, it's important once you move your code over to the live website to turn off the error mode setting. You can do that by either eliminating the fourth parameter entirely or by setting it specifically to error mode silent. Let's now have a look at the prepared statement and give you an idea of why this might assist in protecting against SQL injection. You'll notice that on line 19, we use the select statement to obtain a list of users and user IDs. On line 23, we are then going to generate a list of transactions for each of those users. You'll notice on line 24, there is a placeholder in the place of where the user ID would normally be positioned. What happens then is the SQL statement is sent to the database server in advance on line 25 by issuing the prepare command from the PDO object. What happens then is the database server 
Cree compiles the SQL and it reserves a place for the ID information. This information is then supplied later on line 34 during the execution phase. You'll also notice on line 25 that the prepare command produces a PDO statement object, which we have labeled dollar perch statement to represent purchases. On line 34, we execute the statement, supplying the data at the time of execution. Bear in mind that the ID placeholder can be represented as an associative array where the key is the placeholder and the value is the data that we wish to represent. Alternatively, you can leave out the colon when representing the placeholder in the execution phase. This will then produce a result set, which is parsed starting on line 41 through 48 using a while loop. Notice the syntax. We're using the fetch command from the statement object in the form of an associative array, which is then assigned to the variable dollar result. We are then using the keys within the result set. The keys are represented as column names in the database. So in the purchases table, we have a transaction column and a date column, as well as a sum function, which was represented as the letter S. So going back to the SQL statement, you'll notice we have sum sale price as S. This then will give us access to the sum of the sale prices, but using an alias of the letter S. On line 46, you then see we're using result S, which is the alias for the sum of the sale price. We then finish the inner loop, we finish the outer loop, and on line 57, we terminate the connection. Now, notice also the use of the try and catch block. On line 12, we open up the try block. On line 60, we close it and we introduce a catch block looking for PDO exceptions in case of an error. Moving now to the browser, let's have a look at the result. So as you can see, we have a list of users with the various purchases for each user. In the amount column, we have the sum of the sale price. We also have the transaction number and the date of the transaction. In review, how can you read data from a table using PHP? You would create a PDO class object identifying the driver, in this case MySQL, the host, the database name. You would then also supply the username and the password. In a for each loop, you could then use the query command off of the PDO class object. What is a prepared statement? A prepared statement is an SQL statement with placeholders in the place of actual data values. It's sent to the database server in advance to be pre-compiled. The actual values are then supplied during the execution phase. Why would you want to use a prepared statement? Number one, they give you a tremendous performance improvement when executed inside the loop. So you would only need to prepare once. You could then execute the same statement multiple times supplying different values for each execution. The secondary reason for using prepared statements is that they help protect against SQL injection attacks. What is an SQL injection attack? This is when an attacker attempts to add malicious SQL statements after values which might be entered into an input form on your website. What might then conceivably happen is that if you haven't properly protected yourself against this contingency by using prepared statements, for example, the malicious SQL will then get added to your own SQL statement producing undesirable results. What are the steps involved in using prepared statements? Number one, create the PDO object using the appropriate connection parameters. Number two, formulate the SQL statement using placeholders. Number three, send the prepared statement to the server using the prepare command off of the PDO object. You supply the SQL statement as a parameter. This produces a PDO statement object. Number four, execute the PDO statement object, supplying the values as appropriate. Number five, fetch the results using a fetch command from the statement object. Normally, we would supply a predefined constant, which indicates to PDO it should return an associative array as a result. This concludes our discussion of reading data from a table.